have you been? It's been a long time. time. I'm doing really good. Awesome. Yeah. So, uh... Really busy. Really? Yeah. What have you been doing? You know, work and stuff. Yeah. Casa. What particular things? Uh, a lot of community events. Uh, yep. It's a busy time of year. It is. It Lots is. of fall festivals. So that's appropriate that we have Katie Klein on the show <laughs> today from CASA. That's right. All right. So what does CASA stand for? So CASA stands for Court Appointed Special Advocates, and we are a volunteer organization that trains um, community volunteers to work with foster children. Okay. And we'll get way more in depth in just a little bit, but I think uh, one of the first things we need to do is Katie has been left in the dark here about what we're cooking today. So we need to reveal the ingredients that are under what we call the beach towel of deception. That's an appropriate name. Yes. So our ingredients <laughs> have been cloaked in secrecy since before Katie even got here. So right. we made sure she didn't know what was going on. So here we go. You ready for this? I, I think I am. All right. There they are. Wow. Knocked over the cinnamon. <laughs> so take a look at those. All right. Analyze and tell me what you think we're making. Um, well, we got tortillas. So um, I'm going to go with tacos. Very good. Awesome. So we're going to be making fish tacos. Ooh. <laughs> with mango casalsa. Uh, I like what you did there. You get it? I got it. All right. <laughs> we're also, for dessert, we're going to make uh, sopapilla. Okay. Uh, have you ever had that? No. It's really good. Sounds good. All right, so we're going to get set up, get ready to go. We'll be right back. Now, this is the way I like to cook. Relaxed. Laid back. All right, so this is our fish. Do you know what kind of fish that I is? I don't. What kind is it? Mahi mahi. Oh, that sounds delicious. It's one of the best fishes to use for fish tacos because it's not overwhelming with mm -hmm. fish taste. It's um, it'll absorb whatever seasoning you put on it, and it's firm. Right. So you don't want it falling apart on the grill. Right. So. What we're going to do is I've got, we can use regular taco seasoning or fajita seasoning or whatever you want, but we have my special seasoning right here. All this right. is a combination of brown sugar, salt, paprika, onion powder, garlic powder, just various things. So I'm going to sprinkle that all over the top. And then if you will grab the extra little bit of cumin, all right. You can pour some in your palm and then sprinkle it over the top. And the reason why we're adding a little more cumin is that is that traditional, iconic uh, taco taste. Right. It's very, uh, very prominent in Mexican cooking. Okay. That's my dog. <laughs> Hush! Maybe a little more. God. Yes. And then I'm going to flip it over and we can do the other side. I'll pat it a little bit, get that seasoning nice and stuck to the meat. There we go. We want lots of flavor, so I'm not afraid to add a, a, a decent amount of seasoning to both of these fillets. Um, and also you kind of have to think when you, when you, uh, break the meat up, the mm -hmm. flesh up, it'll it'll incorporate the seasoning, not just on the outside, it'll it'll get into the rest of the meat as well. That looks great. Awesome. Okay, as soon as our grill gets fired up, we'll throw those on and get them cooked. All right, sounds good. Boom. Nailed it. I feel like a homeless person. <laughs> it's terrible. Is that terrible? Yeah, it's a little terrible. Right. Okay, so we're at the grill. Coals are ready. Fish is seasoned. It's go time. That's why I like a patio. I can just put the, the chimney down there on the on the concrete. Right. Don't have to worry about it. That's except right. for the leaves that are beside it that will catch on fire. Not good. I think they're far enough away. Okay. This is not a safety show. 
That's right. This is just kind of a wing and a prayer show. All right, so I'm spreading out the coals here and uh, I'll get the, the grate on. Katie is being a super helper. I do what I can. She's holding up the... Uh, the fish. The fish <laughs> for me. And uh, I lost the scraper. Uh-oh. I'm sure the dog's probably chewed it up, so. Let me see if it's in the yard. <laughs> <gonna cut> it. <laughs> Dang it. She ate the whole back side of it. Well, so much for that one. So this just became a scraper. As long as we get that top coat off of there, we're fine. Right. And it's kind of been burning on the grill anyway. So that should be nice and hot. I won't make you touch the fish. Thank you. Appreciate it. Get that on there. Oh yeah, that nice little sizzle. I don't want flare ups, so I'm gonna put a lid on it. But while we wait for this to sure. cook, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about yourself. About myself. Yes, you know, where'd you grow up? Where'd you <laughs> from? Where'd you go to school? That kind of stuff. Sure. So um, I grew up in Woodstock, Georgia, and I went to the University of Georgia. Go dogs. Um, <laughs> And so I graduated um, in 2008, okay. and after that, um, I really wanted to get into social services. Um, so I decided that I would start by being a CASA volunteer. Mm -hmm. And um, so I started off as a volunteer in Newton County, um, and I just fell in love with it. I love being able to work with the foster children and um, report back to the judges about what's happening with our right. kids. <clears throat> And then from there, um, an opportunity came along where a volunteer coordinator position was open in Rockdale County, and I applied for that and got it. Um, and I worked there for several years before coming over to Douglas County as the director of the CASA program. Awesome, and we were lucky enough to get you <laughs> working for us. That's right. She's awesome, she's amazing, <laughs> and she's a cool person, so Thanks. love hanging out. Um, yep. So we're gonna wait for this fish to finish. Okay. Uh, and I probably need to go wash this real quick. Probably. Because I'm going to use it to flip the fish. We don't want the dogs to get it. No. Right. I'll be right back. Okay. All right. We're back. The fish needs to be flipped. You're oh, no. Flip the fish. Okay. Oh, yeah. Let's see what I can do. Just get up under it and just do this one first and just flip it right over. You don't have to actually pick it up. Yeah, that's perfect. Now slide it back over. Yes. Do it fast. Uh, uh oh. I believe in you. <sighs> yes. Okay. Perfect. Man, that is looking good. Oh. All right, we're halfway there. Great. So while the fish is cooking on the grill, we'll go ahead and prepare our mango cuss salsa. I like it. That is just, that is so cute what it I is. did there. It is. It is just amazing. Did it take you a long time to come up with it? A long, long time, like yeah. several weeks. I thought so. All right, so I am going to let you cut up some of the stuff and okay. I'll cut up some of the stuff. Now I'm giving you the easier ones. I'm okay. giving you the red bell pepper. All right. And a serrano pepper. All right. Okay, you don't have to do anything with the limes right now. That'll be last. I will be cutting up two mangoes and about a half of a red onion. All right? Gotcha. So we want small chunks, you know, sure. salsa size. Right. All right, so let's get started. Now, we found out that you are a bulldog. That's right. And proud of it. I am. As most bulldogs are. Well, you have to be. You made your way to Douglas County. I did. And you are, your title is director? Yes, executive director. Executive director of yes. CASA. That's right. And we learned what CASA stands for, Court Appointed Special, Special. Advocate. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Now, what do they actually do? Well, our um, volunteers um, go through a 30, um, 30 hours of classroom training, mm -hmm. which we provide as well, and they also do 10 hours of court observation. 
um, before they are sworn in as CASA volunteers by um, one of our juvenile judges, um, mm -hmm. Judge Peggy Walker or Judge Michelle Harrison. And Amazing people. They are. They're wonderful. We couldn't have better judges. Um, after the training, um, they're sworn in, and then um, they receive their first cases. Um, so we try to match our volunteers with um, our children. Mm -hmm. And um, so they receive their cases, and what they do is they get to know the foster children. They get to know um, everyone involved. Um, they visit schools. They um, talk to therapists, and they just get a really good idea of what's happening um, with the kids. And then we report back to the judges on if the child, how the child is doing, and if they need any um, special therapies, or maybe they need glasses, mm -hmm. maybe they need some special tutoring for school. But we just kind of act as a safety net to make sure that child receives everything. Um, they need while they're in foster care. And we also advocate for them to um, either be placed back with their families, mm -hmm. if their families can um, uh, rectify the situations that brought them into care, right. or um, be placed into a permanent home as quickly as possible. Okay, so a CASA, yes. as I guess you would call them, yes. uh, is almost like a cross between a private investigator and a mentor. <laughs> yeah, co sort of. Yes, I, I'd say that we um, we do we do some um, you know getting to know the child in the situation. We work with um, the Department of Family and Children's Services. Mm -hmm. um, we work with everybody involved, really, just to make sure that our kids are receiving what they need and um, that their families are being. Um, made whole again, Okay. That, if that makes sense. And I guess that's probably the goal right. would be to get the family back together yes. if at all possible. Yes, You're absolutely. not trying to take kids out of homes. Oh, no, 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 no. We don't, and we don't do that. Well, that's, um, that's the job of the Department of Family and Children's Services. They make that call. They, well, they make the investigations and then the judges actually make that call. Okay. So, so that's, that's a job that we, we don't have to do. That's, that's the hard part for, for the judges to decide. But we try to, you know, we, we're that third party. Um, you know, they're unpaid volunteers so that they, um, you know, that the judges know that they're getting the best unbiased information possible. Mm -hmm. People they can trust yes. to vouch for the child and the situation Absolutely. and give accurate information. Absolutely. And we make sure that the judges also know, um, you know, what the child wants, mm -hmm. you know, um, because we're, we are the voice of the child. So we make sure that the judges are, are keenly aware of what's happening. Right. Mm -hmm. So the, the child gets a little, at least a little bit of say so. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's good. I know in that type of situation, um, it would probably be typical for the child to feel almost powerless. Oh, sure. So yeah. the world is being turned upside down. Absolutely. It's very hard on the children, and, and it's um, you know a tough job that we ask a lot of our volunteers, but they um, are you know, just wonderful people, and we train them really thoroughly so that mm -hmm. you know they're prepared. To, for, to deal with those tough situations. Which, you know, getting into uh, the topic of, of volunteering, uh, you know, I'm assuming that you guys are always needing volunteers. Absolutely, yes. Um, we're always accepting applications. You can go online and um, apply. Our um, website is douglascountycasa.org, um, C-A-S-A.org. Um, and you apply online. We actually have a pretty rigorous um, process to get people um, started. We do, we do an, um, an application and then we actually do an interview um, because we want to make sure that we have um, the best people for the job because we're dealing with um, tough situations and dealing with really vulnerable kids. Right. We have pretty rigorous standards. Um, so we do thorough background checks, um, fingerprinting, 
um, to make sure that our kids are um, receiving the best advocates possible. Right, you have to protect the children. Absolutely. <laughs> you're, not just, you're not just taking every person who walks through your door. That's right, you have to that's right. to make sure that they're qualified and, and, that's uh, right. and able. And I know that we've got citizens out there who have probably thought about doing this, or you know, maybe this is the first time they're hearing about it. Mm -hmm. um, what might be some of the reasons that people are a little apprehensive about becoming a CASA? Um, I think a lot of people, you know, they, they hear what everything that we have to do, right. um, and they think, well, you know, I work full time, um, I've got a family of my own, I've got other, you know, um, responsibilities, and so that really stops people. Um, but the time. The time, yeah. But, mo but most of our volunteers work full time. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of employers are um, want their employees to volunteer and want their employees to get involved in the community. Um, so, and what's, what's great about CASA is that beyond the training and beyond the time, the few times you have to be actually in court, um, a lot of your volunteerism is, is on your own time. Uh -huh. So nights and weekends and when it's, um, when it's um, convenient for you. Work it into your schedule. Yes, absolutely. So, um, so that's why it's kind of a great benefit of, of um, how, how it is we approach our work. Um, and then another, I guess, I, I guess a lot of people feel like they're, maybe they're unqualified because they're not social workers, they're not teachers, you know, they don't have a lot of um, child experience. But um, because of the rigorous 30 hours um, of classroom training that we do, um, we teach everybody what, what they need to know. Mm -hmm. And then we also have staff support for volunteers. So once you get sworn in and you get trained, you're not just out there on your own. Right. Yeah, we're always there um, available to support them, to support the volunteers, and guide them in the right direction. That's awesome. Yep. So in a little bit, we'll talk about why you think people should become CASAs, but, okay. but right now I just want to commend you oh. <laughs> on your on your cooking skills. You're over there chopping like a professional. Oh, I don't know about that, but thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. So you got the red bell pepper all chopped up. We mm -hmm. got the serrano pepper. I'm working on my second mango. Chop up this onion. And the last thing we'll do is add a little bit of uh, lemon juice, or lime juice, pardon me, and a tiny bit of salt and pepper. All right, so our mango casalsa is completed, thanks to your help. Oh, thank you. Uh, and now our fish is probably ready on the grill, so let's go get it. Awesome. I'm putting you back to work. Boom, right. you get to take the fish off. Sounds good. Here's your landing zone. Yes, perfect. What do you think? Had to come in from an angle. Man. You have got the technique down now. All right. Katie? Yes. Do you hear that in the background? I do. Your puppy is not happy. Yeah, we had to put her in the crate because she was getting out of hand. She wanted dessert. So, yeah. And that's what this next recipe is all about. I don't blame her. It's called sopapilla. Sopapilla. It is Spanish. For the love of my life? No, I don't know I don't what it means. That. <laughs> I don't know what it means. It's something about soup, I think. Anyway, hmm. so what you have to do for this dessert is I have cut up some tortillas into quarter slices and we're going to fry them. So I'm going to put about four at a time in the oil and we'll give them a few minutes and then we'll flip them over. So we will brown these up, get them nice and crispy, and then when we're done here, we'll go back over and put this all together. It's got ice cream, fried tortillas, cinnamon, honey, amazing. What more could you want? Nothing. Right. Wow, those look amazing. They do. Oh, can't wait to try those. We haven't even tried the tacos yet. I know. But dessert before the I am the meal? absolutely fine with that. Okay. Let's do it. All right. So we're gonna put these together. 
and I think my favorite dessert is ice cream. So this works well for me. Right. So I get to have my favorite dessert inside of the other dessert. All right, so we'll do a couple scoops. Can't be stingy. That's right. Two for you. All right, so this side just came off. So those are the, the warm ones. If you want to grab as many as you want, just kind of stick them in there. Nice and purty like. Okay. We're gonna do two. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make mine look gourmet. Oh. Yeah. Very I'm good. Like. I think I'll stick with sails, two. Sails on a ship. All right. So then we add a little honey. There's. I mean, cause you can't. You can't go wrong. You can't be too sweet with this. That kind of seasons up the. Uh, the tortillas, cause they are. You know, they're just tortillas. So we add a little bit of honey. Right. And then a little bit of cinnamon. I got it all over the bowl. That's okay. It's garnish. It is. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. There we go. Oh, that smells so good. I'll get us some spoons. Man, that smells so good. It does. Isn't that beautiful? It Let me is clean beautiful. off the side there. We'll, we'll use yours. Yours is prettier. Oh. Look at that. <laughs> that is awesome. All right, break off a little piece of the tortilla, a little ice cream. Mmm. I haven't eaten yet today, so this is this is awesome. Uh oh. This is a perfect start to the day. It is. You ready? I'm Let's gonna do get. Mmm. Mm-hmm. I think I just got diabetes. I think I did too. <laughs> but it's worth it. Completely. That is amazing. Very good. All right, so we're going to let these hold tight. We're going to put together some tacos. Awesome. Boom. There you go. Nailed it. And now it's time <laughs> to put together our fish tacos with mango. Casalsa. Yes. <laughs> All right, so here you go. I Thank heated you. you up a tortilla. Thank you. So you can start with whichever you want. I'll start with the mango casalsa. This salsa goes great with almost any kind of fish. So. It looks delicious. Try it with some salmon, some trout. Oh yeah, I'm gonna load up the fish. That fish looks great. We did a great job. I think we did. Yeah. I'll take a very small bite. Okay. So I don't want to load up my mouth. <laughs> Here we go. All right. Pretty dang tasty. Mm -hmm. If I do say so myself. It's very good. I'm going to leave that there. going to leave the dessert there. And I'm going to do this really quickly. Right. Thank you so much for being on the show with me today. Thank you for having me. You did an amazing job. Yeah. Again, she's from CASA. How can they get in touch with you to volunteer? You can go to our website. It's douglascountycasa.org. That's C-A-S-A dot -A org. Or you can give us a call at 770-920-7503. And why would they want to do that? What are some of the benefits? Well, some of the benefits is you'll be directly helping um, our most vulnerable children in Douglas County. Um, these are children who need your support, who need help, and um, they actually show that um, children with CASA volunteers actually have better outcomes, they do better in school, um, and they receive um, safe and permanent housing quick, more quickly. So if you're looking for something to do that's going to be an immediate and positive impact on the community, this might be just for you. Yes. All right, we'll see you next time on Servings. This is the Kitchen with the Cause. Now it's time to eat. Yes.